Sea star melting disease or sea star wasting syndrome. They call it syndrome because no one really knows what's causing it right now. So there are mass mortalities of starfish that are dying all along the west coast. And this is from Alaska to the coast of Canada down to southern California. In order to help prevent and manage this type of disease, we need to first understand it. So they've named this syndrome after the constellation of clinical signs that they're seeing in these starfish. And it's occurring in an outbreak now that has been affecting the entire west coast, essentially, of North America. And so what it looks like is the skin of a starfish kind of sinks down and their endoskeleton, so that's the calcium portion of the insides of them, was kind of protruding up because they were losing tissues from the top of them. And then they started, limbs started falling off, so they'd lose one or two of their arms and then they would just become flaccid. Part of what I love about marine invertebrates is that um, they're set up totally different than us. A lot of them have one system that's both their circulatory system, so like our blood is the same as their digestive tract. So they just have one, they call it a gastrovascular system, you know. They have essentially an outer layer of epithelium, which is sort of a robust cell. It's the cell that is the outermost layer of cells on your skin. So they have an epithelium. And then underneath that, they have a bunch of connective tissue that's called their dermis. And within that connective tissue, are um, bony parts, which are called ossicles. So they're essentially skin, ossicles, connective tissue, gonads, and guts. The melting that you're seeing, they're losing the outer layer of skin, some of the connective tissue, and then those ossicles, which are their rigid skeleton, is that, that's not melting away. It's just the soft tissue that's melting and the hard, you know, calcium-rich parts are remaining and kind of sticking up. So they look like they're wasting because, as you can imagine, just like if a human is losing muscle mass or losing fat, they get really gaunt because all your hard parts aren't lost as much, right? So all the bones stick out. So the die-offs are completely variable by location. So some locations it's been very severe and the sea stars were hit very hard right away. Other locations it seems like the impact is minimal and we still don't know what the correlation is. So the pathology working group, I think it's seven pathologists now that are all over the country, and um, we're receiving samples from um, universities, divers, um, also governmental organizations that send us uh, part of the disc, which is the main part of the star, and then the arms are all the rays. So we'll get um, part of the disc and an arm or two to look at microscopically. Uh, what happens is, uh, a scientist who knows more about sea stars than I do uh, collects them from the wild or from their captive collection and if they're dying euthanizes them and then puts them in formalin and formalin is formaldehyde essentially which I think most people have heard of it cross-links proteins that will break down tissues and cause them to rot so it prevents rotting from occurring and so puts them in a little jar of formalin and puts them in the mail and sends them to me and then I take photographs and take measurements and document the lesions that I'm seeing. And then I um, section them and put them in little cassettes. And then the lab here embeds them in wax and then puts them on a slide. And then I look at a couple days later when the slides come back, then I look at the slides and characterize the lesions. Uh, the ocean environment is incredibly dynamic, right? So you have on the ocean floor a bunch of organic matter. And with changes in the sea temperature as well as the amount of CO2, that allows marine invertebrates to um, have more or less exposure to certain organic material and compounds that are in the water. My hypothesis would be that changes in global warming, some sort of swell might cause them to be more um, susceptible or have greater exposure to some compound that might be affecting them. But that's just my hypothesis. I don't think we even know yet the scope of the mortalities in the starfish. I don't think we know how many populations are affected and exactly how the populations are affected even yet.